Hey guys, here we go into a special video of We Fight How We Train. And this is going to be a call out video. So before any of you guys get to talking shit, okay, I'm ready to get in the ring with Tony Jeffries anytime, any place. We can hang out in his little creepy basement, whatever, no big deal. Uh, so, with that said, this guy has been following my channel. He's been copying and following along with my content, using my channel to drive his content because he's not a creative person. He doesn't know anything about boxing. I know silver medalist or bronze medalist, whatever it was. Um, if it's not gold, nobody cares, right? I don't know which one. He, participation medal. Um, but uh, he doesn't know anything about boxing. And the most, most recent example of him following along is here's this little we, play, we do play boxing. Now, this is a concept I've been talking about on Patreon, and a few days ago I was talking about it, and I said explicitly, everyone in boxing says we don't play boxing. So if anyone copies this one, it's going to be so obvious. Anyway, he decided to go ahead and say we do play boxing and take that idea, as I said, uh, at Fouts Boxing, we do play boxing, yada, yada. I know it's a small thing to you guys, right? I know, because you guys don't give a shit, because you're not creative. This is not your game. You don't have to learn how to teach this stuff in clever and interesting ways, right? But that's my job, right? So when someone tries to steal my job, right, I take it a little personally. Now, this is not the first time that this piece of shit has decided to try to steal one of my drills and one of my theories, right, about training, okay? Uh, let's see, what's this one? Here, this is actually a comment from his business partner, okay? Glenn Holmes Fitness, all right? That's his business partner. They run a website, a coaching website that... No doubt steals all of my technique and all of this and all of that. I don't want to pay for it. I'm not going to do it. But he said it's his business partner. He'd be interested in getting some deep knowledge on his content, yada, yada. And I said, here, you can even choose. I was more than happy to play along and be friends. But uh, they didn't want to collaborate. They didn't want to make it a, a thing where we're, we be friends and this. They just want the ideas. They just want the content, right? They just want to take it. But uh, anyway... Mr. Glenn Holmes, Boxing Fitness, if you're interested, I was going to destroy your video about the perfect jab because I don't think you have any idea how to throw a jab. I don't think you understand it at all. I think you're like 5% the way there. You've got one little idea in there, and there are so many more. And you're so far away that anyone that you saw throwing that punch in a fight would get knocked out. So that brings me real quick to my sales pitch, guys, the Fouts Boxing Combat System. If you want to learn how to throw all of the stepping jabs and the sliding jabs, it's in the Fouts Boxing Combat System. All the best ways to train them, all the best ways to do it, and all the best ways to learn how your positions relate to your opponent's positions. Okay? Um, actually teaching a much, 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 much more comprehensive jab. Um, anyway, lots and lots and lots of other cool shit in there too. But uh, here, we're going to be taking a look at, and again, these guys are part of my Patreon. They're, they're part of my paid boxing training. Okay? Tony Jeffries. Again, now... We're going to take a look at this, we fight how we train, and the first thing we're going to do is laugh at Tony Jeffrey's training. Now, I don't know when this was exactly, but it's a while ago. Look, a uh, little bit of dip into the back foot, right? Penduluming into the one-two, no head movement on that shot, right? What do we know about Tony Jeffries? Number one, well, he has no power, right? He has no head movement. He breaks his hands when he punches. Mm. But, uh, Anyway, and, and that's a very important idea, too. Are you going to listen to someone who has to quit his boxing career because he breaks his hands about punch technique or how to throw a punch? No, probably not, right? Now, again, jumping, stepping with all his punches, okay? This is a very important idea, okay? Stepping with everything, right? Stepping, leaping with the hook, no head movement. Penduluming in and stepping. And... What do we know about that type of work, right? I know it sounds fancy, it sounds this, but look at him, pendulum in, right? And then still have to step. Who just recently did that and absolutely got destroyed? Tiafimo Lopez, right? By a fighter that most people would rate as less than sea level, right? No, he's a sea level fighter, he's okay. Can't move his head very well unless he's throwing a punch, right? Very similar here to Tony Jeffries, who enters the line in one position, right? Neutral one, stepping all the time with every combination. Now, we're going to show you real quick something from one of his most recent videos. I think he just put this video out today. He's stepping with a left uppercut. That's how poor his technique is. That's how little understanding he has of boxing. 
is that absolutely every single move he makes, he has to step with. Now, this is one of those things that he teaches in all of his boxing and all of his videos that differs from what I say. Um, and again, that's because that's the only way he can do anything. So he has to continue teaching it as if it's part of his theory. But we're going to take a look at how that kind of gets him. You know, well, we're going to watch this fight. I think he wins this one. But uh, this is him fighting Matt Haney, okay? I just want you guys to think about what level fighter this guy would be. If you saw him, if you thought, oh, how good is this guy, right? How good do you have to be the guy with the skills of, you know, Matt Haney? Now, no offense to any professional fighter, right, in the same way, but whenever we talk about boxing on Founts Boxing, we're always relating you not to the people of your generation, but the people of all time. And in this case, Tony Jeffries is a baby. He's also fighting a baby, right? But neither of these guys are talented fighters, great fighters. Look at him, stepping with every punch, right? Easy, super predictable. Even this guy who has an upside-down record can see it coming. And then a big slapping right hand. Why does he have to slap with his right hand, guys? Do you know? Because he doesn't move his head when he punches, right? It's the only way that he knows how to get any weight into that shot. It's by slapping. Uh-oh. And getting timed on the line. Okay, this is going to be very, very, very important later, okay, as he steps with this jab, and even though everything goes right for him, his opponent gets control of him with the right hand, right? Now, I think Tony Jeffries is going to knock this guy out soon, maybe in the second round, I don't know, but we're going to keep watching the fight to continue demonstrating the point, stepping with the jab, one, two, slapping right hand, a little bit of control there, and then a big slapping right hand, slapping right hand. Isn't this the guy that screams in his videos all the time about don't get wide with your punches. Keep them nice and tight and straight. Oh, that wasn't the right accent. Anyway, again, practice what you preach, right, bro? And we're going to, we're gonna, again, we're going to keep talking about, okay, not quite Kovalev, right? Not fainting, not probing. There's no setup. He just has to start jumping into pendulum and then trying to get his weight into this guy. Now, he lands the punch, one. Two, pendulum, left cross. Why is there no power in this punch? Does anybody know? Well, it's because his footwork sucks. And then, right after landing, the whole payoff, the whole reason he put himself in all that danger, jumping on the line with his head straight on the line, stepping like a mere con, but not nearly as fast, he gets caught. One, two, easy. His head is always in the same spot. He doesn't know how to move his head. He doesn't actually have any power. Not a bad block right there. Stuck in the middle of his line here. Mm. Now, look at him stepping with his feint here. Nothing explicitly wrong with that, but it doesn't give him any control of the line. The shoulder feint is a very basic move. Very, very basic. Okay? But he still has to step with his feint. Okay? Again, very important idea. I'll talk about it later. Oh, you're going to see it right here. Oh, he steps forward and gets controlled stepping onto his front foot. Uh-oh. But a guy who can't move his head is not going to be able to set up counter punches. A guy who can't move his head is not going to be able to get his head off the line as he's stepping into that position and then counter you. He can't because he doesn't actually have any head movement. And for a guy that preaches, transfer your weight. You have to transfer your weight if there's a line on the center. We can see that he has no weight transitions. So why is he teaching of them? Why is he teaching weight transitions if he doesn't have any? Okay, now a little bit of slapping right here on the back of this guy's head. Another slapping shot with the, looked like it, it was actually the, the bottom of his hand, like he was hitting him with a hammer fist here on the second one here. Oh, real clean slapping shot, and look at that. He hits the guy when he's down. <laughs> Talk about being a protected athlete, right? Everyone here knows that uh, Mr. Jeffries is supposed to win, so he can foul and he can cheat and <laughs> he can keep his head on the line and try to do these fancy moves and have his line disrupted over and over again by a guy who was never a bronze medalist in the Olympics, who, who uh, in fact, we're going to take a look at what when we take a look at his box rec. A lot of slapping, not a lot of setup here. Right? 
Look at his head sit in the same spot. Step, step, step. Slap, slap, slap. Are these legal punches? Nah, they're all fine. I know that that one's definitely hitting him in the back of the head. Right? Of course someone who's going to punch someone when they're down is a piece of shit. Right? Of course someone who's slapping and hitting you on the back of the head seemingly on purpose is going to be the kind of guy to steal your boxing content and be a piece of shit. Right? Again, you guys, this piece of shit is part of my boxing Patreon, my personal private boxing Patreon. Okay, guys? This guy pays me. He gives me money, okay, for my knowledge. Do you guys understand that? <clears throat> Look at this. He has no idea how to time this punch or set this punch up. No idea. And always stepping onto the line, right? <laughs> Look at him getting annihilated. See how he talks all that good shit on his channel about where you're supposed to keep his hands? Where are his hands the whole time? Now, uh, Tony Jeffries made a comment about a sparring and about a video um, right after I put a video up about my, one of my students' first sparring session, right? About you can tell who's an amateur because they can't control their punches, right? Notice Tony Jeffries throws all his punches at the same speed, right? Like an amateur. Why is he still getting hit by this guy? Uh-oh. It's round one, you guys. Why does Tony Jeffries look like he's slowing down? <clears throat> All right, round two starting. And Tony Jeffries jumping in, blasting with this jab. Wah! And getting countered, right? Doesn't land his punch. His opponent gets control of his head and lands the first right hand, right? Now, Tony Jeffries probably in better shape than this guy, right? He's probably had the luxury of being able to box for many more years of his youth and his life. Oh, is that the last 16 seconds? Many more years of his life and still, I know he's beating this guy. I know, I know. And it's not close. But this guy is not the athlete. He's not in the shape. He doesn't have the coordination in the other parts of his kinetic chain. As we can see him just ducking and folding here. Again, a very weak kinetic chain. Tony Jeffries, decently strong kinetic chain because he's been doing this for a really long time. But this guy does just not have the posture, the strength in his core muscles to keep him um, at an athletic pace, right? He folds really easy. His technique is not good enough. Uh, but <clears throat> we're going to take a look at his record, and we're going to take a look at the box rec, and then we're going to watch another fight. <clears throat> again, Tony Jeffries walking into this punch over and over and over again because he always has to step. Even stepping with his left hook here. Now, <clears throat> Tony Jeffries put out a technique video a couple weeks ago about the way that he threw the left hook. And if you guys paid attention to that, you'll see that the way that he throws his punch in this video or in his fights, it's not exactly how he says. Okay, the way that he teaches. Again, trying to teach techniques that he doesn't understand or know um, because he got them from me. Now, slap. Here's a big slap again. Don't get wired with your punches. Something, something, but... Shit. He looks like shit, right? He has to step with every punch, getting countered, getting timed, parried here, blocked here. I think he lands that shot again. His opponent is not as good as he is, right? But uh, anyway, let's stop giving him some props here. Let's take a look at his box rec, Tony Jeffries. So this was Matt Haney, TKO. This guy was 6-1 somehow. I have no idea how, but... We're going to take a look at the rest of his box rec, 6 and 6, 4 and 3, 10 and 25. you got to draw with this guy. We're going to watch that fight too. But 12 and 15, 3 and 16, 10 and 17, 2 and 1, 2 and 9, 5 and 12. Is this the resume of an Olympic medalist? Of someone who should be bragging that they're going life and death with a guy who's 10 and 25? Are you trying to tell me that if a random guy who had 10, 10 wins and 25 losses 
in his pro career, if that guy was allowed to go to the Olympics, he'd beat them? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, let's see. Okay, let's see. Number one, Tony Jeffries, one of the weakest eras ever, right? Olympic, professional, weakest eras in boxing ever. No offense to Floyd Mayweather, right? But what the fuck do your accolades mean when you're not beating people who would ever be considered top 1,000 fighters? Yeah, some of them would be, obviously, right? Pacquiao in the top 100, you know, but very few fighters. I think Pacquiao might be the only one that would break the top 100. And Canelo, when he fought him, definitely not, right? Anyway, weakest era ever. So let's take a look at second round against this guy. Again, does this look like the kind of guy that should be in the ring with Tony Jeffries? So Tommy Tomlin, let's take a look at what his box rack was. Four and three, right? Another one of those guys. So one guy, four and three, and then the other guy, six and one, okay? And then a two and one. We are watching the only people on Tony Jeffries' entire resume that have winning records, okay? And this is how well they fight. This is the kind of shape they came in. This is the kind of talent level they had. And this is the best that his resume had to offer. Okay? Again, jumping, penduluming, over penduluming, slapping with his big right hand, not moving his head at all when he strikes. Big slaps. And look at how he has to tie up here because look at what position he's in. Look at where his hands are. He has no boxing positions. He doesn't understand what he, how to throw a punch, how to land a punch, how to make sure that he's in the, the correct position to be able to throw the next punch. Well, he doesn't really have a, left, a, nef, a next punch, right? He's trying to smother himself. Nice uh, holding and nice wrestling. It's real fun. Head still stuck on the line. I didn't see who got the first punch there. Doesn't look like he landed one. Okay. Is, uh, is he struggling with this guy? Is it tough for him to get control of this guy, to faint and do anything but step? Okay, got him, right? Big slapping right hand there. Pushing cross, right? Not bad, right? But what happened in the first minute or what? Did it look like this was going to happen? Okay, so decent, right? Decent, sure. Now we're going to take a look at, well, first, let's watch a little bit more of his training. Again, we fight how we train. We've seen, you know, a round and a half, and we, we're going to see every single thing that Tony Jeffries does in his fights, okay, in this one little training clip. Again, because we fight how we train. And this is how he's learned to use the heavy bag. No head movement, striking one, two. We saw him do this move just a second ago. Let's watch that one more time. That's not too bad. Let's go. Was it here? Boom. Off the line. One, two. Right? We just saw him do that move. We find how we train. <clears throat> but where's the head movement? Right? You see him walking around the bag, not moving his head, not changing positions. A little bit of crouch right here, right? Is that a slip? That's nah, okay. Couple of slaps. Where's the powerful right hands? Look at him on the balls of his feet. A little bit of heel. He tells everyone not to be on the heel, right? Stepping on the ball here. Why does he have no power? Oh, because he's always on the ball of his foot, right? Again, we fight how we train. Very, very poor footwork. Let's see if we can find him throwing a left hook. Mm, come on, throw a left hook, bro. Oh, not too bad. Where's those left hooks to the head? Oh, here we go. <laughs> so uh, throwing the left hooks to the head, right? One thing that he starts talking about when he talks about shifting his weight, bringing his heels down, right? So you can throw the left hook. We fight how we train, right? Again, 
Someone who doesn't know how to transition their weight trying to teach you guys how to transition your weight, right? Why, right? Exactly. We find how we train, and we can see that he doesn't, he doesn't train the way that he's tried to teach you guys to fight. Again, because he's a big fucking fraud. So now, we're actually going to watch him fight this guy who was 10 and 28 or something. Or, and we're going to watch the whole, everything that's posted on YouTube anyway. Now here, stepping with his punches. This guy's got 35 fights. Much more experienced, right? He looks a little bit more like a fighter. His posture looks stronger, right, throughout his core. He has enough fights that he's going to be maybe able to do most of the boxing positions correctly most of the strengths to do them correctly. And Tony Jeffries goes life and death with this guy, a guy who's 10 and 25. Throwing a couple jabs, trying to tie up after, trying to find the free points, but they're so predictable. We're not going to watch him hold. Getting timed in his line, decent parry. Head in one position though. Where's the head movement? Where are the feints? Getting smacked on the way in? Where's the position? Where's the blocking? Where's his hand supposed to be? Oh, is there a weight transition? Stepping forward. Might be a decent jab, but look where his head is. It still looks like his opponent who's very overmatched, is still getting a piece of him with his counter. Again, these guys have almost no pedigree. They have almost, I don't want to say no talent, but I want to address the idea that these guys haven't had to have very good schooling to be able to compete with a supposed, I know he did really win an Olympic medal, I know, I know, but if we're going to try to pretend that that's some great accolade, you have to understand that the level of competition how these fights are scored among the weakest talent pools ever, okay? Getting completely controlled, no head movement there. Lands one jab. See how he throws the punches? And now look at him circle out, guys. We fight how we train, right? We fight how we train. He's a dummy. He's a fraud. He's a shitty fighter. Oh, my God. Stepping, right? When you always have to step. When you always have to step, right? Even with his feints, right? Because he has no head movement. Uh, what's the plan here? Shoot the big jab, get countered, pendulum, and then tie up so that he can not look like a scrub moving around in circles? Now, Watch him take this step here, you guys. And as he's taking this step, his opponent looks to time him. Now that his opponent has him figured out, he's got the confidence to start disrupting his line and throwing punches. I want you to pay attention also to Tony Jeffries trying to get into that pendulum rhythm, trying to take that step, and he was about to throw a right hand. Look at him cock that punch. Look at how wide it got. Practice what you preach, bro. You talk all this good shit, but you still move your hands in your professional fights like a goddamn amateur. Now... We're going to connect some dots real quick before we watch this guy beat the crap out of Tony Jeffries and show you exactly how shitty of a fighter he is. This is this guy who's a random bodybuilder who has no boxing experience. I actually don't know what his boxing experience is, but he's not an Olympic bronze medalist, an Olympic silver medalist, okay? But look at how Tony Jeffries starts to get on the line. And now they're playing a, a boxing game here, okay? They're playing boxing because there's a rule set here. So they are playing boxing. They're playing a body shot version. Tony Jeffries can't move his head, so he has to step on the line. And this guy's able to time him and easily get off the line because Tony Jeffries can only throw punches in one position. And he can only throw punches when he's the one that leads. So there Tony Jeffries is, jumping and stepping on the line, and this guy times him and then controls Tony Jeffries. So Tony Jeffries can't pendulum and take that step on him. Right? Like he's trying to take here. He's trying to jump up. He's going to try to take this step and follow him off the line. Right? But he gets controlled. And now, look at him take a step forward. And his opponent times him again. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Right? And then starts moving off the line. Right? And then Tony Jeffries has to step with his jab. Right? 
What happens right after he steps with his jab? Boom. He has to pendulum, and as he's penduluming, he comes back down, and his opponent recognizes the timing and says, oh, as long as I hit him, I can control him because he can only punch from one position. Boom, boom, boom. Control him, push him off. Now he has to reset, and look at him. Look at Tony Jeffries about to get into range. He's about to get that left leg out, and look at him taking his leg and shifting off the line, right? Not allowing Tony Jeffries to get into that range. Oh, as soon as Tef Tony Jeffries starts stepping on that lead leg, look at him slip. He knows. He sees his weight coming, sees him get on the line with him, throws another combination, and look at how he doesn't give the space away after, right? He controls those gloves and continues circling off. Again, this is the fourth round against someone who has no boxing experience. He's just a random guy. He's just a random guy, and he is dominating him in terms of scoring and positioning and understanding what place he has in the ring. The only advantage that Tony Jeffries has over this guy is that he's practiced throwing punches enough that his punches are still going to be harder and better and faster. So he's going to have an advantage when the line isn't the body, it gets to be the face. But I'm going to tell you guys, Tony Jeffries will not enjoy this advantage against me. I will knock this motherfucker out. And I'll do it in the first fucking round. Now, again, we're going to watch this guy go life and death with this guy who's a journeyman at best. Look at his technique. Look at how slow he is. Pendulum cross, again, catching him with that shot. I don't actually know if he catches him because this potato quality stuff here. It does look like he catches him. Look at him right through the guard because Tony Jeffries has no head movement. He has three beats. One, two, three. And his head stays in the same spot. Timing him coming in with the hook. Timing him here. Perfect. Control. Pull counter. And he just doesn't get his offense off. He, drills, he goes for the uppercut, but he doesn't go for the right hand. But he's getting schooled. He's getting schooled by a guy who's 10 and 25. And no offense, um, Michael... Or Michael, Michael, I can't know, I don't know his name. <clears throat> Brilliant performance. I appreciate you taking the fight. It's very risky to take fights against people who are as protected as Tony Jeffries was going to be. One, two. Look at him just walk into that punch. Where's his head movement? His head's in the center of the line. It's either in the center of the line or it's always right here. Getting timed again. Jumping in with his pendulum jab, getting timed with that counter, and no offense. Now, why is a guy who is supposedly an Olympic silver medalist or Olympic bronze medalist, an Olympic non-gold winning medalist, why is he getting tired in a, in, in the seventh round in a, of a fight against a guy who's 10 and 25? Does anybody know? Oh, Nobody? Okay, well, we fight how we train, right? We fight how we train, so let's take a look at his training again. Let's go back to the footwork, okay? A little bit of heel, stepping on the ball here, right? No weight in that back right hand, right? Because it's literally off the ground when he throws it. No weight, right? Ball on the ball, on the ball of both of these feet, jumping around. A little bit of a rhythm step here from him. I wonder if he can fight from it. A lot of ball, ball, ball. A lot of being on the ball of his foot, stepping on the ball here. Now, it takes a lot of energy to move around like this. Okay? That's probably why this video of him training is only two minutes long, because he probably can't even move at this pace for three minutes. Okay? It's hard to move around like this. That's an incredible pace. It's even more difficult to move around like that on the balls of your feet all the time and to have any defense. It's even harder to move around like that and have any offense. Look at, the guy is dominating him, you guys. And look at how good his positions are, okay? How spectacular of an athlete is his opponent? Isn't that the simplest one-two you've ever seen? And again, as long as he does something in front of Tony Jeffries, he freezes him because Tony Jeffries has to have complete control of the line in order to let his offense go because he can only fight in a straight line. 
And then this guy, all he has to do is control him a little bit and move off the line. And Tony Jeffries is lost. He's lost. He doesn't know where to go. Look at him. Trying to play some boxing games. Trying to bait. Trying to draw him in. Okay. Found a counter from the, from the little game he was playing. Uh, and then gets stuck with the 1-2-3 right there. It's a little bit of a yikes right there, right? All right. Tony trying his hand at boxing again, right? No counter on that one. Getting his line disrupted again. He comes in with the jab. Gets controlled. The guy shifts back with a pendulum step. Boop! Right hand right through Tony Jeffries' crappy control, right? Tony Jeffries doesn't have any head movement, and he's not looking to fight, right? Actually, step jab. Gets controlled, stepping, and comes gets caught coming down, trying to jab again while his opponent still had control of him. Like, <laughs> Tony Jeffries, do you want to fight me, dog? Come on. You want to set the rules? Maybe I can only hit you with body shots. You want to play? You want to, have a, you want to play some boxing games with me instead? We don't even have to spar. Now, again... I know you guys are hating, but this is Tony Jeffries' business partner asking for my help, not wanting to collaborate, just wanting my knowledge. Here's Tony Jeffries, not wanting to collaborate, just wanting my knowledge. And again, he's part of my Patreon, okay? He pays me. He pays me. So enjoy the free critique, Tony Jeffries. Enjoy it. How long are you going to take what I say in this video to train before you decide to call me out and try to fight me? Because I'll still beat your ass. Fucking pussy. Step. Look at him stepping with his head movement. Where's the counter? He has to move right back into his position and reset. Stepping with this punch. He can't follow up because he's always stepping with his jab, right? Where's the feints? Where are the probes? He's trying to land one jab and then avoid any further engagements. He's trying to spoil the fight, right? Because he can't fight. He can't move his head. And he knows the more engagements he has with this guy, the worse, right? Right? This guy actually shifting his weight, throwing some hard punches. Not that hard, you know. He's not a super athlete or anything. But at least being able to get his head off the line to throw combinations, right? To throw his to time Tony Jeffries coming straight in. <clears throat> Do you think this guy could go 12 rounds? Do you think Tony Jeffries could go 12 rounds with this guy? Again, a guy who's always on the ball of his foot, right? It takes a lot of energy to do this. A little bit of heel there, even though he says never to step on your heel, right? Doesn't he say not to do that? Fascinating, right? Fascinating. Isn't it interesting when your heroes don't even know what the fuck they're talking about? Right? Tony Jeffries still lives in the magical Christmas land of boxing, okay? Where there's fantasy. There's no fantasy in boxing. There's no fantasy in Fouts boxing. I know all the rules. I know how to teach everything. I know how it all works. And I can see that Tony Jeffries fights like shit. And that video of him sparring with that guy who has no boxing experience, or maybe some, looks like, you know, not so bad. Definitely no professional fights. Tony Jeffries fights exactly the same way. Well, on the line, uppercut, off the line, back on the line. Look at that. He hit Tony Jeffries with his own combo, right? <laughs> Trying to pretend that, that that shot was low. That should be a knockdown, by the way. Tony Jeffries gets knocked out. Eighth round. By a journeyman. Come on, bro, fight him.
Keep your hands up, right? Where's your hands? Where's your elbows? I oh, know from eating lots of body shots, blah, blah, blah. Smack. Mmm. Did that one, like, purposely hit him in the back of the head? Like, did it? And again, you get away with shit like that when you're a protected fighter, right? Yikes. This guy can't defend the one two to save his life, right? He's just lucky he hasn't fought anyone that can throw a one two. All right, guys. About 30 more seconds of this crap, right? Again, not to pick on him, right? But if you guys want to use my boxing theory, right? And and, and then again, anyone who talks about position one or position two or the front foot position or the back foot position, those are Fouts boxing theories, okay? That, those are mine. You are learning Fouts boxing theory, okay? If your coach teaches positions and not a boxing stance, like it was traditionally taught forever and ever and ever, until I started teaching it differently, you are learning from me. Give me my credit. Say my name, okay? Tony Jeffries, say my name, bitch. You guys think this guy could fuck with me? This guy? This guy? <clears throat> and again, I hit harder than Tony Jeffries. I know I do, okay? Say, Tony Jeffries, you put out a video saying 30% more power. How about we have uh, just a power punching competition? Okay? You can choose even what punch we throw. Or we could throw all of them. Right? You want to play some games? Anyway, Tony Jeffries, you big fraud. If you want to fight, I'm down anytime, anywhere. Same thing with you, Tom Youngkello. You fucking pussy. Been stealing my shit for a long time, too. I'll fight you. I'll fight any student you got. Coach Anthony, I called you out a couple weeks ago. Eddie Chambers came to my channel, my Instagram last year, and said he wanted to fight me. I'm five foot six. I called Tony, I called Coach Anthony out, and he had, he had Eddie Chambers come to my Instagram to try to bully me, to, to distract me. But to, Eddie Chambers, you fat fuck. Fat Eddie Chambers, I accept. I'll fight you. I'll do three rounds with you. And then you got to get Coach Anthony to do three rounds with me. Okay? I'll get to beat both of your fucking asses. Anyway, anybody else want to fight? Damn, ain't nobody want to get in the ring, right? Anyway, uh, I talk a lot of that good shit, but I'm always willing to put my hands up, put my mouth where my mouth is. <laughs> Anyway, Fouts Boxing Combat System, y'all want to learn how to beat some ass. If y'all want to learn how to actually get on the line. And FYI, guys, the jab that this guy teaches is almost exactly like the one that Tony Jeffries throws. Almost exactly. Tony Jeffries throws it a little bit better, but it still sucks. So if you want to learn how to get on and off the line and throw the jab and learn how to throw a left cross, a left jab, a real hard punch or a real great setup punch. If you want to learn the difference and how to how to throw those punches, check out Fouts Boxing Combat System. Okay. All right. Later.